Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Um, this is tutorial number 29 in the first Steps in Preparation series. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Mate notes. Um, you use those notes, for example, if you have a uh, green screen, some green screen footage, and you want to key out the green parts. And right now, um, these notes are under heavy development because um, the people from the Mango project obviously need them um, for their project, and some 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 very good uh, developers are currently working on them. Okay, so um, let's just go to the node editor, to the compositor, use nodes and backdrop. And here you can see there are quite a few nodes under the matte nodes. And um, in order to use them, you first of all need some kind of footage. And I thought, what is more fitting than um, some mango footage? So let's just delete the render layers. We don't render anything today. And let's go to the image. And now let's just open under 229 this image here. And um, I have no idea who that really is. I must say I'm not very informed about the project right now. Um, <clears throat> but this is some of the footage that you can also grab from um, mango.blender.org, uh, the official uh, Mango Open Movie Project um, website. And if you um, have this kind of footage, obviously you want to get rid of the green part so you can replace it with with, uh, with something else, okay? <clears throat> and there are different methods, okay? So if we go to the matte nodes, you can see there are a lot of nodes here. And let's just add the first five for now to the scene. Distance key. Oh, and by the way, one thing is also important to know. I'm not very... Um, good at, at a green screen, green screen um, keying, okay? I didn't do it quite often, but uh, I think it's decent enough to give you um, a short overview um, on how those nodes work. Color key and finally the channel key, okay? So you can see they all have one thing in common, um, and that is that they need an, an image input, okay? And... Um, Let's start with the distance key, okay? Or actually with the color key, that's the most uh, logical one. You put that in there, and then you can see the image is connected to it, you have an output, and you have a matte, which is the, actually black and white Im the actual black and white image that um, uh, determines w w which parts are transparent, which are not, okay? Right now, the key color is white, so you can see that's what we get. Um, but that's not actually what we want, so we need to change the key color. You can just click on the color, um, <clears throat> click on the color pick tool, and just pick some kind, some green color like this. And now you can see if we go to, um, if we click on this button over here, then we can actually see the alpha channel, and you can see this is what we get. Okay, so you can see um, the green parts start to disappear, but not quite the way we want it to. Okay, so now we have to adjust those settings. So in this case, with the color key, you have hue, saturation, and value, okay? And with each slider, you adjust the tolerance for um, that specific channel. For example, here we have the hue, okay? So right now, only green is accepted. And the bigger that is, the more, uh, the more different colors are accepted, okay? So if you go to the other end, you can see suddenly um, you, you, you start to have... Um, bad parts all over the place, okay, or keyed out parts all over the place. You don't want that, so you have to make sure that the hue is not too big. So let's go to point 0.1 for now. And then this is the saturation, okay. So let's go up with that a little bit as well, and you can see a few more parts are being keyed out. And then the value, which is the brightness, and that does its part as well. And now you can see we already have a pretty clean key, okay. Um, now, one way to really visualize this is by hitting Shift A, Color Mix, putting the image in there, using the matte as a um, factor, bring that over there, and then just changing the color to red. Okay, so now you can really see which parts are being keyed out. And you can see it's some parts over there, over there, over there, and over there. Okay. Now, um, that's all nice and dandy, but we cannot really go any further than that, okay? Because 
if we start to key out more, then his hair starts to disappear, and it's already a bit much, actually. Let's just go back a little bit. And then we put him over there. Yeah, okay. Now, one thing you might want to do right now is you want to use a filter node. Not a filter node, I'm sorry. A um, filter blur node. And you might want to blur, not the footage, actually. I'm sorry about that. You might want to blur your um, black and white image, your matte or your mate or whatever that's called. I'm still not sure. And let's go to fast Gaussian and let's just change the blur to let's say three pixels by three pixels. And that way it's just given that everything's a bit smoother. Okay, cool. But now we still have those green outlines around the object. Okay, and we really don't want those green uh, outlines. So what we, and also you can also see those holes here. And those, I think those are actual holes in the objects. If you look at this image, there's, you can actually see through that. They're also a bit smoother. Um, yeah. But we still have those green uh, areas, and we don't want those green areas, of course. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a tool that's called Color uh, Unspill, or Color color Spill, or uh, let me just see. Um, color Spill, okay. So let's connect the image to, let me just see, uh, let's just put that in there. So the image that is being used um, to overlay over the red parts is actually unspilled. So let's just connect that to the camera. And let's just go to the regular view again. And you can see what happens here. Um, all the green colors become blue in this case, okay? So next thing we wanna do, we wanna make sure that under limiting channel, we have green selected as well. And now you can really see what happens here. Um, all, all the green parts start to disappear and they are being replaced by a different color, okay? So now you can see that w when we look at the final footage, um, we no longer have those green parts. It's, not, it's, it's rather a gray color right now, okay? So now we, ha we, we, are we have to try to match it as well as we can with this red color. And if you start to scrub on that thing, not much changes really, okay? What you can also do over here um, is check the unspill. Then you have a few other options. Now you can actually um, like this. Actually, make it red or a purple color. Um, and then if you adjust that, you can see we can get something like red, I believe. Let's just hit give it a bit more blue color as well now nah, so that didn't really help a bit less on the green something like this probably and let's just see what that looks like and now you should see that this really um isn't such a drastic difference anymore okay but you can see even now it's not perfect and um i'm sure there are better artists in this area than me much better even but uh with these tools i get just just about here um, one thing you might we might try is actually to increase uh, this to about let's say f seven pixels so we just have a better uh, big blur. This really always takes a lot of time, okay? But um, yeah, it might help. It may help. It may help a little, but it's not quite the solution either. But now, of course, there's one other thing to notice. Um, we we try to overlay to over a red color, which is really really difficult. Let's say we want to go with a dark darkish blue. Because this is a bit more realistic, usually. Okay, now it's actually blue. And now if we uncheck unspill again, um, then you can see, now this already matches it much better. And now I think we can actually, just with this thing alone, we can change something there. Yeah, now it starts to blend in a bit better, I must say. A bit more. Yeah, now you can see this looks actually pretty good. Um, yeah, and now this is how you can uh, key out the green parts. But there are different ways, okay? And um, some of them are quite simil similar, and I must admit that I do not always know what, where the difference is. For example, now we have the difference key, and this is uh, quite um, obvious. You have one image, and you compare it to another image, and whenever it's different, um, you get um, a white output. Okay, so let's say let's take this image in. 
Let's connect that to the viewer. And let's actually just take all those upper notes and let's just mute them so they aren't being considered at all. Now we have this output. And now you can see it does something very similar. Uh, we choose a color and you can also choose an image over here, but usually, usually you choose a color. And whenever um, this is different or w whenever this is the same, it gives, gives you a black output and whenever it's different, you get a white output. In our case, of course, you want to pick the gr a green color, okay? So take the color pick tool again and let's just pick some kind of green color. And now you can see this didn't work out fairly well, but now you can just um, scrap down the tolerance and then you can actually see we can get a pretty clean key as well, at least in this area over there. And if we increase tolerance, then we get issues over there. Okay. So this is just what, as far as we can get. Now, you can say this is a problem. We have this uh, area keyed out, but not this one. So what are we going to do? Quite simple. We just use a different uh, difference keynote, a second one. You could also, for example, now use this get a color keynote to give you a second pass, and then you can kind of combine the strength and weaknesses of the different notes, okay? But in our case, we're going with the difference key again. And this is not much use right now because now we are keying the exact same color. But since over here uh, we were able to key out this part, then why not try to key out this part with this note? So just hit the color pick tool again and just connect that to the viewer. Okay, pick the color pick tool over here and let's just select this part. Okay, let's look what that looks like. And you can see now we have a pretty clean key on this side, but it's horrible on this side. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use a color, a mix node and we mix those two together. And now you might say, hmm, if we just go to 0.5, then this is even worse than the others. So we need to find some other technique. And the way you do that is in this case, we are going to, you're going to darken. And if you select darken, then the darkest image, uh, darkest pixel of each image is being chosen. So let's go to one there. And you can see now we have a pretty clean key actually. Once again, this is too, um, too harsh. So I would once again go with a filter blur node. Hit that to, let's say, five pixels each. So it's a bit uh, softer. But you also might want to try, let me just see. Actually, let's keep it this way. Let's just keep it this way. And also, we still have a bit, little bit of grain over there. That's That comes from this one, I guess. Let me just see. Okay, uh, we just want to increase that a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. Okay, we can even go a bit further, I notice. Like this, let me just... Yeah, not even too bad. Okay, now we have a fairly clean key. And now we can once again take color mix. Mix this over a, a different color. Let's say mix it over something like this. Like so. Over there. Uh, actually, that goes over in there and then we can use the image over there no that's wrong over there here we go and now you can see we have similar issues to what we had before once again we have a pretty clean key but still we have a lot of green parts so the way to get rid of them is once again using a color uh, a mate color spill bring that in there and this is usually almost perfect by default green that big, make it darker. Now it starts to become red. Okay, that's not that's not too cool. Um, we cannot. Yeah, but like this should be okay. And now this thing looks like. When did I change the color there? Anyway, let's like reselect this blue, this darkish blue color. And now I must really say we have a pretty clean key and we can work with that, okay? Um, yeah, now we're not, not going to, to do the same thing with every thing, single note. So let me just show you how the others work. Now here we have the chroma key and I must admit, I have no idea how this really works because if you connect that to there, okay? Then you get this this output, this is the math. math. And now you can, with acceptance, you can change, of course, what is accepted and what isn't. 
and the other way around. And then with cutoff, you can also change, influence that a little bit. However, um, the problem here is that you have no kind of control. And you might think, okay, let's change the key color. Okay. Problem is, in the Blender wiki, it says that this chroma key does not have a key color picker. However, there is one here. So you might say, okay, let's just pick a color there. And you can see it doesn't make any kind of difference. No matter what you put in there, the output is completely unaffected. And so I must admit, I do not really know how this is supposed to work. And that's also why we just simply delete it. If someone knows, you may, also, may always post it in the comments. I do not know. Now, next thing is distance key. And once again, I do not really know why it's called distance key, but I can show you how it works. It's quite similar to the other things. You, you just pick a color. Um, you pick a color. And it keys out this particular color. And you can see it does a pretty good job. If you look at how it does this, it's pretty awesome. Now, once again, you can increase tolerance a little bit. But then at some point, it starts to take in some of the parts that you don't want to be left taken in. Now, what you usually do to avoid this, you, you use a core mat, okay? A core mat and, and a garbage mat to um, pre-select things, so to say. But uh, let me tell you about those things uh, in a few minutes. So right now what you can do, we can change the fall off a little bit, but that makes it worse as well. So let's put it down a little bit. But you can see this is a pretty cool key. Let's just put the fall off a bit lower. Yes, here we go. Okay, you can see, once again, same technique as before. Maybe I would even go a bit lower with the tolerance there. And then I would duplicate that again. And I'm not going to really do it the whole thing right here. But I could once again put that there and here pick the color from over here. You have a matter from this one as well. Uh, you might actually increase the tolerance a little bit. And now you could once again darken, use this one over there. And we have once again a pretty clean key. And you can see we can achieve quite similar results with all the techniques. Uh, keep one thing in mind, and that is that this is a pretty clean footage. Okay, This is a pretty clean green screen recording. It doesn't always work this well. Okay, that is quite important. Um, and finally, we have the channel key, which is also quite cool. However, it only works if you really have the right kind of footage. Okay. With this one, you do not choose um, a color. Okay, you just connect the, the image and then just select which is the, the key channel. In our case, it's green. Okay. And then, really, all you have to do, you just have to increase the low until you have something you like. And you can see it gives you a pretty clean key nearly instantly, okay? But as you can see, you cannot choose any colors. So if you, for example, want to key out something else, uh, let's say you have, I don't know, just a weird a footage that does not ha have anything to do with a green or blue screening, then it doesn't work, okay? You need either a red, green, or blue. And you can see we have some blue over here, over here, and over here, and this is exactly what's being keyed out. So it works um, perfectly. Uh, actually, let's just go to green. You can also play with single and max. Um, single works sometimes even a bit better, but uh, it's more, in this case, it doesn't really work better, of course. In this case, you would have to go with max, and that gives you a pretty good result right off the bat. And with this method, you don't even need um, different notes, okay? And then the next note we have is the color. We, all, we already talked about the color spill. Um, it just enables you to, to spill one channel. Okay, so for example, if you put that in there and we connect that to the viewer, right now we are spilling the green colors. Okay, so all the green colors become slightly bluish. You can also uh, spill the blue colors, then they become greenish. As you can see, it's also pretty cool. You can spill the red colors. Uh, not sure what happens then. Then everything red becomes bluish. And you can just play around with those settings. Usually, you have you go with green and green. This way, you can just key out the green parts, or actually green and what was? Yeah, something like that. Uh, you can play with that however you want. Um, cool. Oh, one thing: make sure you do not go too low on this value, otherwise it is, will be noticeable. You can see, and um, the guy and the computer and the lamp, and so they all look quite similar with different values. But once you go below a certain value, you can see they start to change. And they, they, then they become really red, which is not something we actually 
want. Okay. Now, let me just... We talked about the channel key, didn't we? Okay. And the next thing we have here is the luminance key. Once again, another key to mask out certain things. However, this one, I'm not really sure what you use that for, but this is here to um, mask out bright areas or, or dark areas, however you look at it. Connect the image to it. And let's connect that to the viewer. And let's just look at the mat. Or the mat here, whatever that's called. If you increase the low, then you can see only the bright areas um, are still white. Everything else becomes black. And the other way around, if you put that one really low and you bring down the bright areas, then you can see, um, well, pretty much everything um, is still being considered and only the dark parts um, are masked out. So it's basically, you can decide how bright an area is supposed to be in order for it to, be, to still be considered um, afterwards, okay? Uh, but... As I said, I'm not really sure what you can use that for because it's certainly not useful for a color key, um, but you, you never know. Sometimes you might actually find this useful. Let's see if we make it very bright and only the bright areas are saved. Also, if we connect the image and we go to an alpha, and then you can see only the bright areas are being considered and the lower that is, the more you can see of the rest. Then you can bring that down as well. And I think right now I must say it's probably kind of handy if you want to make some kind of artistic, uh, to get some kind of artistic effect. Because right now, if you were, for example, to use this, and um, put that in there, and the matte in there, then I must say this does look pretty... Okay, that's the wrong way around. It gives you a nice effect. I mean, yeah, like for an album color, a cover or something, Maybe you'd have to smooth it. Anyway, you can do a lot of crazy things with uh, those notes. Um, then we have a double edge mask. And let's talk about that in just a few minutes. And let's, for now, talk about keying. Uh, by the way, we're going to skip keying screen because it's really not something you usually use. It's, it's a way to um, create gradients. Uh, I haven't looked into that too much, so let's just skip that. Keying. This is actually the note that I believe is being used in Mango because it wasn't here previously, I think. I hope I'm right. But now it is. And this is really cool because it kind of combines everything. Okay. So let's just one thing. Let's just put that to up there. And then let's just put all this stuff to up there. Mute all that. And let's take just this note to down here. And let's now only talk about this note. So you connect the image to the image and the image to the viewer. And you can see already something happens. Now we want to pick the right key color. Okay. And that would be something like this. And then you can see it automatically works fabulously. I mean, just fabulously. Now if you were to simply uh, grab a color mix node, use that as the image to be mixed and that as the factor. And you can see it instantly just works. It's absolutely amazing. And if you look at how it works, it's just absolutely perfect. It's much better than all the previous versions uh, we talked about today. You can create any color you want here. You can really go, you can go with red this time. You can see it works. It just works. And I think this is absolutely fabulous. Um, it's absolutely amazing, yeah. So if you want to do some serious color keying, then just use this node. And usually, in most, most cases, it's, it just works right off the bat. Um, now you can make a few adjustments here, a pre-blur. Pre this is this blurs the image before uh, it calculates the matte and it doesn't affect the actual image. But it's it can give you improvements on um, on your key. Like, you can see it's just fabulous. Um, we have something going on over there. So we might change a, uh, try a few things. If you go, if you increase the clip black, then you can see more black appears. And here we go, now it's almost perfect. And then you can just dilate a road, the whole thing, without adding an additional dilate a road node, okay? If you go smaller, then the whole mask shrinks. And if you go bigger, then the whole mask grows. As you can see right there, and... 
Um, obviously, all those things um, affect your final out, but you can see it's it's really almost perfect. There's a little bit of thing going on around the uh, the cheek now. That's because we eroded um, or we dilated the mask. Now you can see it's gone, and it's just yeah, it's just absolutely fabulous. And then you can also just add in a garbage um, mat over here. And yeah, I just noticed that um, what I have opened right now is not the newest version of Blender. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just going to file save this. Um, under tutorial 29 exactly. Save Blender file. And then, okay, then just, just close this. And let me just open up the new, newest version of Blender. And um, there's one thing to keep in mind, and that is that if you wanna follow this tutorial from now on, you really need to make sure that you have the newest build, which can be um, downloaded from graphical.org, okay. Blender Foundation. And it's version 48.463. Okay. I'm just going to open that. Close the folder and open this. And now you can see um, on the exact same <clears throat> on the exact same node, we have an additional input, and that's the, the core mat. And we can uh, talk about those in just a second. Now about those other um nodes. Box mask and a lips mask. Okay. We do they have one thing in common. Um whenever you select one of those, you can see a certain area on your image is um is framed. Okay, and within that frame there is a mask. We need some kind of input, I just noticed. Let me just see. Let's just shift a color mix. Create some kind of input right there. Let's make this black and put that in there. And now you can see this is our mask. We have a black image here and then we overlaid this mask. Okay. And now you can change its position, its width and its height. Okay. And then you can uh, change uh, the rotation of course as well. And now let's just for example take this image and let's just color mix use the mask as the factor. It's And it's actually clever, more clever to put that in there. Now you can see it multiplies that over this. So now only what's within the mat can be seen. But you can also go, of course, to subtract. Then you can just see a black uh, black space over there. Or you can go to add, which just makes it white. But uh, be careful now because now we have uh, values above one over here. Okay, Because we added one to a, an existing value and therefore it's now bigger than one. Um, and so on and so forth, this way you can use this, this, uh, th these masks. Now the difference from the ellip ellipse mask is simply that uh, it creates an ellipse. Okay, so yeah, you can, you can as well change the width, the height, and this is for example also a way to creating a vignette, where you have a bit more control than um, with some other existing techniques. And then you can of course use it in the exact same way as the other mask and just go like this. But that's not really useful. Now what can you actually use those nodes for? Um, it's pretty decent for garbage masking. Let's just delete the ellipse mask, we don't need that right now. And let's take a look at um, this key, okay? And we talked about the screen um, balance before, but we didn't really uh, take an in-depth look at it, okay? The higher it is, the more red shines through at places where you don't want, okay? And the lower that is, in this case, the better. You can see, if you go all the way to zero, then now it's actually um, blue over here. But you can also see the quality of the hair is a bit lower. If we go, if we increase that, you can see, around the hair it's a bit better, okay? So, now you might think, this is so annoying. We have issues over here in an area where there are no... Um, where there's, there's no uh, red touching it. So really, keying in this area is unnecessary. It's only important uh, around the borders, okay? So what you can do, you can simply go with that value anyway, although everything in here is a bit redder than it should be. And what you can do now, you can simply um, manipulate this mat, okay? So let's take a look at this mat. You can see those are the issued areas, the issue areas. And now if we can overlay something white, then the problem is solved. So we can just take this uh, box mat, and then we can just adjust that. We can just um, zero out the rotation, zero. 
we can change the position to 0.5 so it's in the middle we can change the width so it actually frames the whole um, it actually covers the whole uh, image then adjust the position to let's say over there then let's just use that as um, let me see let me see anyway then let's just use that a color a mix put that to over there put that to in there and let's just change this to lighten and now everything should be white uh, that didn't really work too well here we go now everything's white and now you can see those areas are no longer being affected at all and that's actually very good this way okay um problem now is that over here you can see this line that's where uh, the mat takes its effect so you still have a few issues but you can see this is barely noticeable and you can see that it actually does its job now this is called a garbage mat or actually um sorry wrong way around this is called um a core mat okay garbage mat is something that automatically um, deletes parts that are not being used, that are green obviously, and this is good for um, core mats. Now you can, instead of doing this complicated setup here, let's just delete that, and you can just use the core mat in there, okay? It says core mat. And then you can see we have the exact same thing achieved as with this other complicated setup, okay? But now there's one other thing. For example, um, we would have to tremendously increase some of the settings here to actually get rid of uh, get rid of this this point over here, okay? And we do not want that. That's too much work. So what we can do, we can just uh, create a second mask, put that in as a garbage mask, and now the computer has a problem because it doesn't really know. We um. We selected this area twice, once as a garbage, once as a core mat, and therefore we have some issues now. But if we um, change its position here, let's say there, and let's just ch change the width down all the way to, let's say, like this. And let's just see where it is. This is actually perfect. Then now you can see this dot should be gone. And you can see it's gone. And that is because, let me just see if it's actually true. Let's just take a look at the mat. Yes, you can see it's gone because now we, over here we have um, this this garbage mask that actually masks out the uh, well garbage. You can see it, it's it's a bit it goes a bit too far over here, so let's just adjust the width a little bit, and now our problem is actually solved. Yeah, so um, now we have covered nearly all the things that I want to cover in this tutorial. Except for the advanced masks, okay? Those are very basic masks, and they are fairly boring to use, and they are fairly uh, inefficient and not flexible at all. They are just either square or elliptic. Or elliptic. Well, it's either a square or an ellipse, and that's not really cool. So there is a new tool, okay? And in order to use that tool, you have to go to, um, to the movie clip editor, and you actually have to um, load in some kind of footage. So in our case, let's just open that very image as... A movie okay which is not very cool of course because it's only one frame but it doesn't really matter so now if what we're going to do we're going to um, create a mask here okay the way you do that you just go to mask editing in the mode you hit plus to create a new mask and over here you hit plus on the mask layers and then you just control click on your image and you can see something appears and then you can just make your way around the objects you want and what I'm doing right now is a garbage mask okay so everything that I um, frame right now will automatically be deleted from the scene okay like this and then you can after control clicking all the points you can just hit alt C to close up the mask okay so this is our first mask but now you want a second mask okay so let's just um, create a new mask you can see now we have our first mask over here and our second mask over here, mask 001. And let's just call the first mask garbage mask. And let's just call the second one core mask. Okay. 
Let's create a new mask and let's just do the other way around. Let's just select everything in the foreground anyway, okay? And let's just make sure that we do not touch too, man too much of the green parts here because they have they are supposed to be keyed. Okay, like this. Then of course, be also careful with the hair because um, the hair has to be keyed as well. Like this, and then let's just go to over there, 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 there. Like this. Okay. And I'm just see over here. I think we also have a few green parts, and this is hard to know if you if you've never been to the actual scene, but I think there's some there are some green parts over there as well. And that should be just about it. Alt C to complete. So now we have two masks. So let's now just leave it leave this as it is and let's go back to the compositor. And then let's just delete all those things. Delete, delete, delete. And with Shift A, let's just um, bring in input mask. And now you can see we have our mask. If you connect that to the camera, and if you select the mask, you can see we are supposed to have a mask. Um, let me just see why this this doesn't work. Okay, so it suddenly started working. No, no idea why it didn't before. And the core mask. Um, come on. I'm not sure why it doesn't really update it automatically. Oh, here we go. We just have to click it again. Okay, so th those are our two masks. But they are a bit small. Let me just see. They are indeed a bit small, so let me just see why that is. Uh, okay, found out about the issue. Uh, the thing is, the size of this mask is also always automatically your re render resolution, okay? Our render resolution is now uh, HD, okay? But our image is much bigger. Our image is, uh, if we take a look at the properties of the image, um, our image is 496 by 2160. Okay, so let's just type that in here. Okay, and now if we take a look at this, you can see it's got the appropriate size. So now we can actually um, use that as the, let me see, this is the, the core mat. And the other one would then be the garbage mask. And here we go. And now it's also easier to um, make the green screen um, because now you have a smaller area with green uh, in it, okay? Same goes for those nodes up here. Um, if you have issues with uh, keying something, make sure you use um, a, a very rough garbage and core mat to begin with but then, because then um, color keying becomes much easier. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for that as well. Now, the final thing we still have here is double edge mask. Okay, and this is fairly cool as well. Um, let me just show you what that does on this mask. Okay, so of course, this mask doesn't need to be exact, but sometimes you might want it to be exact. Okay, so what you can do, let's just, let's just um, do the following. Let's just duplicate that. Or then let's just add in a um, convert uh, a fi filter dilator road node in there, and let's just increase it by actually quite a lot. Let's go to ten, so it's really a bit bigger. Okay, like this. Even more. Let's just go to fifty. Doesn't really matter. So we have two different masks, and one of them is bigger than the other one. So now if I you can see you have a double edge masks and you have inner and outer mask. So the bigger one is the outer mask, the smaller one is the inner mask. And you get this output. And here you can see the result. It automatically interpolates between the inner and the outer mask uh, with a soft gradient. Okay. And now you can adjust this mask with, for example, a color ramp bring the black in a little and, and the white parts or with whatever you want and then you can get a very um quite a lot of control over the size of the mask uh, like this and now 
Uh, yeah, this is also kind of like a feather effect. If you've worked with uh, After Effects before, there they they call it a feather effect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you have an inner mask and an outer mask, and it automatically gives you a gradient between the two to to, to connect them. Um, yeah. So let's just delete those things as well. Th this is uh, what I can show you about uh, green screen footage and how to key it out. Because there are a lot of different techniques uh, with the keying. Usually it just works right off the bat. This is a really, really, really great node. And uh, hats off to the people who developed that. And yeah, I think we covered most of the things except for King Screen, which would go too far for this tutorial, which is something I have never really used before. If you have any kind of questions or comments or suggestions or whatever, make sure you post them in the comments. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.